Now that we've set our free fall, and now that we've checked for our tips to make sure that they're aligned properly and that they're crossing each other, now we're going to go ahead and check for set in the scissor. If you refer to your manual that came with you here or two, you'll be able to see a few pictures of the different st kinds of set problems that you'll run into. What you want to do is you want to sight your scissor down a light source. You want to hold the scissor out straight in front of you, and you want to be able to look through the shear and be able to see the gap of light. Now, it's going to be very difficult for you to do here in the picture. I'm just trying to give you an illustration of what you're going to be looking for um, in the, uh, the manual. But between the blades, you're going to see a gap of light from the, th the ride area where it's going to touch right back here behind the screw, and that gap of light will run all the way up between the blades up to the tip, and it will touch at the tip. If you don't see that gap of light, then there's a possibility that you might have a set problem. Sometimes you'll see a spot here where it touches before it gets to the tip. That usually means there's a dead spot here. Now, the best way to test for that when you're actually doing just by feel and not just also by sight, and you want to do both. You want to feel for a good positive contact of the blade, and you also want to sight as well by looking through a light source where you can see the gap of light between the blades from the tip down to the ride area. What we're going to do is I'm going to cut with this shear that we've just sharpened and I'll cut on a piece of paper towel. Now you can see we've got a good clean cut all the way to the tip. On a piece of Kleenex you can see again a good clean cut all the way straight on down to that tip. But if I take this shear which I put on our set adjusting tool here and I actually knocked a little bit of set out of the scissor. In other words, I bent one of the blades away from the other blades, similar to if somebody had dropped the scissor and possibly stepped on it with the heel, or maybe they tried to pry something open foolishly with the scissor and had bent the blade so that the set is not proper in the scissor. You can see that when I do a cut on the paper towel, it wants to fold at the tip. Right here, as it closes, you can see it doesn't want to close all the way to that tip. You can see it pull away right there, and it folds that material right over at the tip. So now what we need to do is we need to deal with the set problem that's been brought out in this shear. The way that we're going to do that is we're going to use our set adjusting tool. So now that we have the setting tool in front of us, we're going to go ahead and insert our blade into one of the slots. Now you can see that there's multiple slots across our set adjusting tool. and the set adjusting tool is made of a neoprene. It's a plastic material. So if you happen to bump a blade edge up against it or the blade, you're not going to damage the blade. That's what the purpose of this block is for. It's got a little bit of give. Now, what I'm going to do is my set problem started right about right here at the tip. What I mean by the set problem, again, is that the blade has been bent out away from the other blade. So what I need to do is I need to bend this blade back in to match this one, or I might have to do a little bit of bending on both. So what I'm going to do is I'll insert this blade into the slot that the blade will fit into. Obviously this one is a little bit small. We can get into this one. We can't get into this one. So I can start here. You want to go into the smallest slot that you have available, but you always want to make sure that you start behind where your set problem is. You never want to start in front of it and start bending because you can cause a snake in the blade where it's almost like a little S wiggle. As it closes, it's going to touch here and then it would touch at the tip. So you want to make sure you start behind where your set problem is. Again, refer to your owner's manual for uh, more information on this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you if I start a little, if I have a set problem further back in the scissor, obviously I'm going to want to start in the wider slot so that I can start further back. In this case, my set problem is right up near my tip, so I'm going to go into the smaller slot and I'm going to bend the blade. Now the way that I bend the blade is I'll just do a gentle torquing of the blade. And you can see I'm bending the blade in towards the other blade. Now, some scissors actually have a slight twist to them, too, or the blade wants to twist in. And in that case, what you'd do is you would actually go in, and you'd put your thumb up against the one blade, and you would kind of bend and twist at the same time. And you can see here how I'm twisting and bending at the same time, and I'm bending that blade in towards the other blade. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to test for positive contact down the blade. And of course, when you're testing this, you'd want to have a light source underneath, or you'd want to have a light source up above you, so that you can try and look at the gap of light between the blades. You want, again, a touching at the tip, you want a touching at the back of the throat, and as you've heard before, what, like you'll see in the manual, if you could be, you want about a gap of light where you could take a couple of pieces of paper and, and push it in between. 
It's not exact, but that's just a reference, a rule of thumb, something for you to think about when you're trying to actually set this thing to where you can see that gap of light. You don't want it too flat, but you don't want it over bowed either because the blades would dig into one another. Now, I've done this first blade. I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of twist in the second blade. And again, I'm just going to do a little bend and a little twist as we go here. Or you can just bend it as well, and you can see I'm just keeping it flush up against the block. It just depends on what you think the, the scissor needs at the time. If the blades might be bent out away this way and this way, or if it's just bent this way. And that's just a practice thing. Really, the best thing that you can do is take a pair of scissors that you have um, with your starter kit and take your set adjusting tool and bend the scissor out of set. Knock it backwards, bend the blade away, and then test cut with it. If it won't cut, work on trying to bend it back in. And then once you've got it back in, it may not feel perfect the first time, bend it back out, do it again. And keep doing that until you get a little bit better feel for the set. This does take a little bit of time to learn. If you ever have um, any concerns about this or if it's hard for you to do, of course you'd want to come and train with us here at Wolf and we can help you with that. Now, we've done a little bit of twisting and a little bit of setting. And now if we go with the same pair of scissors here, you can see that if I come up to this material, I can do a test cut and now it's going to cut clean all the way to the tip without any grab or any pull. It just falls right away. So now that we've done our initial test for set and we've tested by feel and we've looked and we can see that we have a good cutting scissor and the scissor feels good. Now we're going to want to do our final test to see if we have a sharp scissor that's ready to go back to our customer.